ambient or background sound generator for a Motorola? What's all that about? What do I mean by ambient or background sound generator? In effect, up this week, we're gonna be making an MP3 player for our model trains. Spent a ton of time of recent times experimenting with different electronics for the modeler to help them understand what can be done with limited knowledge and a limited budget. So make sure you stick around to the end for some other tips and tricks and some other model train electronic wizardry and goodness. So you might be thinking, where could I use this type of technology? In the example that I'm gonna show you today, I'm gonna to look at doing it in a harbor scene. Also, I've been sort of thinking other cool areas you might be able to look at doing is in a factory area and also a little bit close to my heart and I'll show you where this might go. Uh, my early father is a, an organist or used to be an organist for our local church. So we've got some recordings of him playing the pipe organ. So what I'm gonna look at doing is putting that into an MP3 format so I can play that in a church scene that I've got uh, in my bar in town on the Fallen Log Railway. Let's look at the, the tech that's required to get this up and running. So first of all, we're gonna need um, a buck converter or something or a power supply that's gonna run at uh, three and a half to five volts. So I like using the buck converter because I use a 12 volt DC with it and it steps the, the power down to the, the three and a half volts. On my layer, I have a five volt or three and a half volt also Arduino bus, which runs around my various parts of my layout that I tap into that way. But you could also use um, a wall wart or a wall type transformer um, and achieve the same results. The other little guy is the MP3 TF16P. So that's the, the little MP3 module that the SD card slots into. This is predominantly used with Arduino projects, but I'm sort of bypassing all that sort of wizardry for easy use. So you can also buy these online through Amazon or Alibaba, like all the products that I'm about to show you. The speaker I'm using is from uh, an iPhone 4, and I find they're, they're quite, quite a nice sounding speaker. Um, they don't sort of clip or distort too much. These little guys um, have, as I said, had some good clarity but it really comes down to what sort of file you're gonna to upload to it. If you're gonna upload something that's really, really heavy with the bass and all that, obviously you're gonna need a larger speaker. Now, the speaker I'll be using is a four ohm. So apparently via the Google machine, when I looked at it, um, that's the, the, the ohmage that this little uh, MP3 player likes. I've run this tech for probably over an hour now and I've had no issues with overheating or sound de um, degradation of any note. The other thing we're gonna have to look at is some sort of micro SD card. So you don't need anything of great size or large capacity. All it's gonna do, uh, my project is about three and a half minutes or three minutes 45, and it just loops around continuously and plays from start to finish and loops around. So, uh, but there are options to randomize the sound, uh, which are beyond the scope of this tutorial. Oh, I didn't see you there. Let's get into making the MP3 player. All right, let's jump into it. So this really is a relatively easy circuit to put together in its most basic form. So let's have a quick look at the MP3-TF-16P, which is the, the MP3 module. So you can see there's a lot of pin there, pins there, but we are only going to be using a very small amount. So effectively, we're gonna use this VCC pin. That's the three and a half volt DC positive input. We're going to be using the two speaker cables, speaker one, speaker two. We're going to be using a, a ground for three and a half volt DC. And this, sorry, the add key number one. So they're the, the five, predominantly the five pins we're going to be looking at. So let's go over to the, the, the diagram very quickly. Before we start, and I'll show you how to put this little guy together, let's have a little short advertisement from my sponsor, PCBWay.com. Over to you guys. 
This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or an advanced electrical engineer, PCBWay have you covered. Or you are seriously missing out. They are passionate about PCBs, but PCBWay do not stop there. They also offer 3D print, injection molding, or CNC machining, assembly, or basic PCB manufacturing. They can do it all for a very competitive price. Check out their awesome services in the link below and also a special offer to anyone who supports my channel. All right, so this is predominantly the diagram where we're gonna be looking at. So on the back end here on the right hand side, we've got what we call the buck converter. So that's gonna bring our, our voltage in, our voltage in our 12 volt DC, positive and negative. And then we're gonna output that at three and a half volts, which this little guy can take. So we just gotta be very, very mindful of the positive and the negative. So positive on the bottom here, which goes to the VCC pin as we showed before, and the negative here goes to the ground. So then you've got the two speaker outputs, speaker one, speaker two. Now, and what that actually does is at boot up, so when this is turned on, turns this little guy on, and all it does is turns the module on straight away and plays track number one. So effectively, we're going to only use one track. So then it'll play whatever given track that you've got. On screen, you've got uh, Adobe Audition. So what Adobe Audition is, is a sound manipulation piece of software so it's an industrial type uh, piece of software so it does look rather daunting however if we break it down very very simply um, this is by no means a, a tutorial that is going to show you the ins and outs of this very very powerful powerful program but in short what we can actually do is layer the sounds in individual tracks so you can see we've got one at the top here one two three four five six and seven layers of sound so that's seven different tracks that we've got running uh, that we can put sounds on. So with that, we can manipulate how long the track is um, and how loud each individual track is to have an overall nice mix. So Adobe Audition is a paid service, which but you can also use what another one called Audacity. And that's, very, that's just its website there. So it's very, very similar, um, not as powerful in regards to some of the, the background functionality to it, but um, it, is a, it is a free option. So in short, all we're doing is we're making an MP3 file that's gonna be uploaded onto an SD card. And then with that, it gets plugged into the, the, the MP3 module and away we go. So let's crack on. Firstly, what you need to do is work out what type of sounds you're after. So this example here, I'm doing um, a harbor scene. So that's gonna have all your nautical type sounds. So what we're gonna look at is there's a few websites that I used. And this first one is called Quick Sounds, and I will put the links to these below. So these are all uh, free sounds that you that you can download. So it's just a matter of going in and searching on in the search engine what sounds you're after. So that's obviously a um, some sort of semi-trailer. You can go into a numerous amount of sounds. Um, there's just thousands of things in here. Uh, the other website that I looked at was, uh, it's called Pixabay, and it's the same sort of thing. So it's just a matter of you can go through and test the individual sounds. And that's quite a deep boat horn there. And then what you can actually do is then just download them. And then what you go from there, you bring, you come back out to, so you come back out to your program and then you just load them into the individual tracks. So this first one, is so we can in here we can just play the sound of the waves crashing all right so at that point you can sort of get the idea so that's just then you just play around that you don't want to have then obviously you just get all your sounds in and then you sort of manipulate them the way that you want to do so it's up to you how you want to how you want to structure it. So I sort of had my sounds that go for the whole clip, sort of at the top here. Then I work my way down with the various ship horns and the like. Then what you can actually do is just play with the overall uh, decibel level of each soundtrack. So it sort of so it sort of meshes in nicely. So you obviously don't want to have any one sound 
um, that's sort of overbearing than the next sound. I suppose the ones that you are going to have a little bit louder are um, your ship horns and the like, and but they're only just going to be going for a very short amount of time. You wouldn't have them a uh, horn going for the whole length of the track because that just become annoying. So this track here is about three minutes, 45 seconds in length. And then what you do here, you actually then make these into one or a stereo audio MP3 track. So just before we get on to on how we might do that is then you do your final mix. So um, I, I made the decision very early on when I was going to make this player that when it when the player turns on, it turns on to its maximum volume. And then you can actually, if you want to, install buttons to in, go up and down. I didn't want to do that. I just wanted it to play out of the box, so to speak and go straight to the level of the sound that I wanted. So you can do that in Audition and Audis or Audacity, um, and then just do your final, what they call the master mix, which is this very bottom one down here. So you have your final volume right from the word go. So now I'll show you what I've actually come up with. I won't part play the whole three minute 40 version of it, but I will uh, play, play a portion of the sound just to say what, it's, uh, what it actually sounds like. Thank um. So you get the idea. Now, what you go from there is, as I said, you make, um, you export your project to an MP3 file. So it's just a matter of within um, Adobe Prem, sorry, Adobe Audition. It's just a matter of exporting. So it's called a multi-track. So this is we got multiple tracks. So it's called a multi-track mix down. And it's just a matter of you go entire session. So that then it just goes down to exactly where you want to save it. So it is a little bit trial by error regarding the output or the, the final sound, but as you can show, the, the SD card comes out very, very easily from this, and it's just a matter of um, playing around to see what size speaker you got. That's the next thing, and what volume you're going to be at, and um, you obviously got to be a bit mindful of you don't overstretch the speaker that you got, so you don't get clipping and distortion. So if you made it this far, I oh, thank you very much for watching the video. Make sure you subscribe, bash that little bell icon to make to notify the fear, the greedy little out YouTube algorithm to, to show them it's a good video. Um, as I said, thanks again. Now, this next section is the little little tips and technique section that I I wanted to show. Now, it wouldn't have been a wouldn't have been one of my videos with Arduino and electronics if I wasn't adding some sort of DCC input to this. So what I'm looking at showing you now is how I've made this come into the DCC world and be controlled via a, a, a switch command. So that opens up a whole lot of other possibilities, I suppose, like one of a better phrase to be able to control a little bit differently. As I said, I'm not keen on buttons and switches all over my my physical control panel, or my faces, I should say. But I do like them being brought into the train controller world and you'll be able to do it to iTrain and JMRI. So I'll show you firstly how it works and then we'll talk about the very easy way it can be brought in with a DCC stationary decoder to be controlled. So the possibilities I'm thinking of this, this could be used is you literally could have these sounds turning on for a certain occurrence or a, for a certain action that might happen on your model railway. So if it's say if you're doing factory noises and a, and, a, and one of your your shunting areas is within the factory, you could have those 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 areas, sorry, that sound generator turn on when a tr certain train comes into a certain block within your your industrial area or just something like that. First of all, I'll show you over on the camera here. So we're currently on address number 14, DCC address. So I'll just switch that on to there. You can hear the relay go. And you can hear the sound of the sound generator fire off.
And then again, you can also switch it off using the same DCC switch command. So now we'll just quickly come over to train controller and you can see around that little halo there, that, that, that lonely little guy right in the middle of there, which is just a, that lonely little guy there is just a little toggle on and off switch. So what we can actually do, we we'll, we go to the connection, same sort of thing. It's a loco net DCC command address number 14. And you can then see, we'll go to the live layout and then we'll quickly flick to quickly flick back to, to the bench and show you how that turns on the sound generator. And turn it off again with the same switch. So just to show you on the fly, what you could actually do here in regards to, so what I've actually put here is I've created a block. We go on the block ed editor, we can go and add some detection, detection unit, but then we got these little guys here, which are action markers. So you could have that any given distance and we could go ambient sound gen -er a tour. Then we can set up all sorts of conditions about only certain trains might be able to fire it off and then what we can do we can either we could actually go in we can go accessories harbor generator and we'll go to state one because that's the on state i think from memory yep so no state two is the on so when a, a train comes in to this given distance it'll hit that or as soon as it enters that block it hits that sound generator what it does in turn, it will then fire off that sound generator. You can have some delays and then turn it off automatically as well after a certain amount of time. So that's just one way I can think that you could use it in a you know a factory scene. Let's say what we got here is how I'm bringing, how I'm using the DCC interface and also DCC stationary decoder. As I alluded to before, all we're doing here is with the DCC decoder, we're controlling the output of the relay. Now, this is a mechanical relay. You probably could go through and use a MOSFET, um, like little amplifier type thing, which is uh, doesn't have a sound to it. Obviously, these make a clicking sound when they turn on and off. So in short, we've got the same circuit as before. We've got the three and a half to five volt buck converter the output on the rail here, on the positive and negative rail. So I've got the negative here to the common and then on the normally open. So when we turn, turn this whole system on, it's not gonna turn itself on normally open. It goes up to the VCC pin here and then in turn, turns on the module. So within the Mardex shield, we got down here in the middle here is, so we've got the five volts Coming to the VC of the, the relay, we've got the ground going to the ground of the relay and the middle control pin is going to, that's actually pin number two, um, as I did before. So that'll be, sorry, pin number three, I lie. Um, so that'll be address number 14 for this particular module. That's pretty well in a, in a nutshell on how I control it using a DCC stationary decoder. Cheap and easy, gives me a lot of flexibility regarding how I can turn this on and off. I can turn it off with, on and off with a controller. This is the end of the video, so thanks for watching. Some takeaways, as always, is sort of a theme that I'm looking at doing in my, my latest videos is. So there's three questions I'll put in the description below if you can answer in the comments, in the comments section. So what I personally like about it, um, relatively it's a pretty easy circuit to put together. It doesn't cost a lot of money. It's nice and small so it can be squirreled away in other, in some buildings or um, underneath the, the layout depending on where you're planning on installing it. I could see I'll be adding quite a number of these to my layout so I, to add a little bit of realism and just add that another fourth dimension of just some background noise other than just the trains rolling around. 
as always, the questions I invite you to answer in the comments section below. Number one, would you, is this the type of system you might use on your model railway? Number two, if so, what little tweaks would you use or have you set up a very similar system on yours? And number three, always I like to make sure my skills are always upgrading as well. So that number three will be, how could I make this circuit better or any other glaring errors that I've made, obviously, um, whilst making this? Make sure you comment in the description below. So thanks for watching. Make sure you click that thumbs up to let the YouTube algorithm know it's a good video, if you're assuming you think it's a good video. And also, if you can also subscribe, that feeds that uh, the YouTube, the greedy YouTube algorithm to let it know it's a good video also. So thanks for watching. See you next time.